Look, we've got the Tesla Model Y. Thanks to Rick, his wife Melissa, and their three daughters for lending us this vehicle to review. Let's get in and take it for a ride. Whoa, <laughs> this has got power. It certainly does, Andrea. We don't say what's under the hood, we say what's under the floor of this Model Y. This long range all wheel drive has two independent electric motors with a 75 kilowatt hour battery. It has 384 horsepower and 531 kilometers, 318 miles of EV range. It goes zero to 100 kilometers per hour in five seconds and zero to 60 miles per hour in 4.8 seconds. The performance model has 450 horsepower or 488 kilometers. That's 303 miles of range. It goes zero to 100 kilometers an hour in just 3.7 seconds or zero to 60 in 3.5. Now the reason that we have this Model Y is that my buddy Rick watched the ID4 video that we did. Yeah. And I'll put the card right here. Uh, we were lamenting the fact that Tesla doesn't have a press fleet. So he contacted me and said, hey, take ours. Yeah. So thanks to him. So let's get into it. What do you get with the base Model Y? A 15-inch touchscreen, leatherette upholstery, heated front and rear seats, a heated steering wheel, power driver and passenger seats, a glass roof, five passenger seating, a power lift gate, 19-inch wheels, and front and rear parking sensors. <laughs> There are no buttons and switches. What are we going to do, Andrea? Well, you can still put it in S for subscribe. And if you can hit the notification bell, you'll be notified when all our reviews drop and then you can watch them. And we do this, the couple car review twice a week. The first one drops on Wednesday. We put out another couple car review on Saturday. So don't forget, hit the button and the bell. And if you want to follow along on Instagram, it's motormouth underscore Andrea. For me, it's motormouth underscore auto. And the links are below. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of two-year door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love it or return it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more. You love that, don't you? Oh, it's so satisfying. You know what I think I need to do, though, is I need to program the speed limit in here and then just give a percentage that I'm allowed to go over because this thing is too quick. Andrea, dressed like that, you would get out of a ticket. All right, here's the thing about Don't this. Don't want to assume. Here's the thing about this vehicle that I find surprising mm. is the suspension is really quite firm. And I'm also surprised that Tesla doesn't offer or even have standard at this price point. I think it should be standard because all of the competitive uh, brands have adaptive suspension. Yeah. They don't have it. That is true. I am a little bit surprised getting in this Model Y, how firm the suspension is. I thought that it would be a little bit softer. It's not the case. Of course, it's not as firm and as bumpy as what you get in the Mustang Mach-E. Yeah, that was terrible. Very different. Now, the thing is, this is running on the upgraded wheels. The base wheels are smaller. And if you live somewhere that has a lot of potholes, shout out to uh, my friend Josh in Montreal, who just got pretty much the same car as this. Over potholed roads, I think it would be really a bit crashy. So yeah. make sure you try one with the smaller wheels. This price point, this car, if you were to buy it today, is 86000 the way yeah. it's equipped right now. It should have adaptive suspension. And the other thing, Andrea, yeah. the regen brake is not adapt. It's, it's not changeable, I should say. I would love it if you could adjust it like the old models have. I know people who like the one pedal driving yeah. get into this, but for someone like me, I like a little bit more control. Well, it's interesting because Rick and Melissa also own an ID4. And one thing that his wife always says is that she prefers this Tesla that when she approaches a stop sign, a red light, once you take your foot off the accelerator, it slows right down. Yeah, it doesn't creep forward. No. Now, Zach, what do you think of the looks of this thing? Well, I'm no fan of the Tesla design philosophy. I think the cars are kind of like a face a mother would love. Uh, this one, I think, is maybe the better looking one from the back. It's got a nice looking butt. It's become so much a part of our vehicle landscape now. I'm yeah. just used to it. Well, I like the back end as well on this. It's got some good hips on it and a good stance. What this reminds me of is the Model 3. It's just stretched out and it's higher. It's actually two inches longer two inches wider than the Model 3 and seven inches taller. The one thing about Tesla, and I think they're kind of missing out on an opportunity here, is they don't put any decoration on their cars. Mm. They're 
they're, they're basically it's like a Christmas tree with no decorations on it. Yeah. And they don't do what the Germans do, I think, particularly well, is like extra chin spoilers and things on the outside, maybe some decorations, some uh, script and things like that. And mm -hmm. that's their philosophy. People certainly are buying into it. I like a little bit more on the outside. Now you've got to pay for some colors. The white and the gray silver is standard. So if you see but somebody you... with a white or a gray one, they're cheap. <laughs> if you want blue, <laughs> black, or red, and this red is the most expensive, it's $2,600 Canadian, then you got to pay a little extra for those colors. Okay, so that's not coming from me. I was talking about how I think that uh, Teslas all kind of look the same, and then somebody wrote to me and said, yeah, you can tell the cheapos that they get the white one. Well, it's kind of nice to see some red ones on the road. I have to say, within five minutes of driving yesterday in Vancouver, there are a lot of Teslas. I saw 10 of them, and every time I see a red one I go oh they paid a little extra for that one so many model threes plenty of models a lot of white ones a lot of white ones a lot of white ones <laughs> <laughs> all right the inside is a basic uh, by the way Zach some people just like white I know I'm just joking. we have a white car I'm joking yeah um, the thing is the inside is in a continuation of that design philosophy uh, less is more yeah. and um, it certainly in my opinion is less yes it's a minimalistic design this is what Tesla wants simple, clean, modern. You'll notice that there is no head-up display. There's no gauge cluster. Everything is done on this screen. Don't fret, the speed is easy to find. It's on the top left-hand corner of the screen. We're gonna get into this more in questions, coffee and cars, talking about the interior, the build quality, all of that. So we're gonna touch more on that in a moment. But let's talk more about the screen and what it can do. There are so many software updates that Tesla puts out to upgrade what's going on in here. There's dog mode where you can put your dog in the car while you run into the shops and your dog will be at a comfortable temperature and there'll be a that's, sign on the screen. That's that the one that says, Andrea puts when she runs into Starbucks. <laughs> she leaves me in here in dog mode. And then everybody knows that Zach's okay. <laughs> There's also camp mode. So if you're charging your vehicle and you want to take a nap, you can keep the heat on and be very comfortable. There's all of these little things, Netflix, YouTube, if you want to watch a motor mouth review. That's for people who are sitting charging. You want to do something while you're sitting and charging. You can watch a, a motor mouth video. Good idea. Yes. And also, what do they have to do, Andrea? Well, you got to put it in S for subscribe. Hey, <laughs> and the other thing that this does is you can set up a profile for yourself. So I've got one, Zach has one, and you Rick can has one heated, too. You can put your heated seats, <laughs> you can do a heated steering wheel. So when you get in the vehicle, everything is exactly the way that you left it. I really like this screen. I think it's a perfect size. It's easy to glance at. It's not too in front of you that it's distracting. It's responsive. It's quick. It's excellent technology. I'm really impressed with the quality of the cameras, like the backup camera and the surround yeah. view cameras. Very clean. The thing is interesting is when I filmed this and shot it all out, I go, well, here's a shot of the screen and the steering wheel. Let's get another shot. Oh, mm -hmm. it's the screen and the steering wheel. Let's do another shot it's the same there's that's all there is the yeah. screen and the steering wheel it's very simple and in a world where everything is pretty crazy right now it's nice to get in your car and have this simplistic <laughs> so, so this design is, oh this and is, what about this glass roof yeah, that's pretty impressive yeah i don't like uh, panoramic roofs but this one i don't mind all right let's get into the space and everything in the back seat so this is in the compact suv class the most popular class and i think it's well designed for the second row seats because this is a three row version yes so the long range is three rows and the performance performance is only a five-seater vehicle. This one has the ability to slide the second row fore and aft, so that gives you a little bit more flexibility. It's a $4,000 option though, so consider that. Yeah. It's nice to have some flexibility there. I think there's pretty good room. And then the back seat, it has a flat floor and it offers 40.5 inches of legroom, which is more than the ID4 and the Mach-E. Now, the third row. Rick has three kids. Of course, he needs that extra row at the back, but it is only for kids. Yeah. You actually have to shimmy in between the second row seat and the and the pillar there uh, sideways in order to get in and then getting out I tried to get out but my <laughs> hips wouldn't fit so I had to go same thing one leg at a time it's, I, it's tight I got stuck back there too I had a hard time getting out but his daughter Audrey she loves it back there it's like her little office 
and that's where she sits every time she gets in the car. I noticed at the very back that there's marks on the bottom of the door. Yeah. I'm guessing that they have the seat and she jumps in through the back. That's what I I'm guessing. I think so. I think that's probably the easiest. She's small enough and she's able to do that. Now the space is really good with the third row down and we did carry on in a cooler. What I thought was fun was the big hole in the floor. Yeah. It gobbled up our carry on. Yeah, I think that that's great. You know, you can put your groceries in there and then you could put the top on and put other larger items in the back. Even behind that second row, you've got 30.2 cubic feet of space. Uh, Rick told us that he uses the frunk for when he gets takeout. Yeah. And he puts it up there because he doesn't want the food smell in the car. Makes yeah. sense. It's just an extra space and they use their cable uh, up there as well. So it's it's uh, well done. And the space in that is 4.1 cubic feet. And now we get to the good stuff. Your questions. A lot of really good questions and we're going to dive deep into this one. Time now for questions, coffee, and cars. Your questions from Instagram. I really like how pragmatic you and Zach are when it comes to value. Thank you. Given that this was always meant to be a mainstream vehicle and the price is now squarely in luxury car territory, is there enough value to make it a good purchase or lease? Well, I ran the numbers on this. So in Canada, on their own calculator, over 48 months um, with 20,000 kilometers per year yeah. mileage credit it's about twelve hundred dollars before tax this car that we're sitting in in the canadian market is eighty six thousand dollars we have some extras on here yeah so it brings it up to 86 yeah. and it doesn't include the self-driving feature which is another 10 grand so um, yes you're right it's squarely in line with buying a mercedes an audi a bmw something like that yeah so most people will never be able to buy a vehicle like this in their lifetime they just don't have the budget for it so i don't really think that I would say that there's value, but what it does offer is a lot of technology in the luxury category, let's say. And I think that that's pretty amazing what you can get in here. It's impressive what Tesla has accomplished in the past decade. Mind boggling really when you consider the industry and the established players. How do you like the interior and the build quality of this Model Y? I've heard it needs improvements. So when it comes to build quality, there is some issues. You hear from owners, there's things like the paint chipping, and um, I guess Tesla does not fix that under warranty. So yeah. they're saying they've got to do that on their own. Uh, we have a somebody that we work with who's a detailer. He details yeah. hundreds of cars a month. And his opinion on the paint quality of Tesla's, he says it's bo much below the industry standard. Yes. And when you look at the interior, I'm not going to say that there's anything wrong with the design of the interior. It's a minimalistic interior. That is definitely something by choice choice that whether you like it or you don't but when it comes to the quality of the materials in here there is a lot of wear and tear this is a six month old car rick has said this is a real workhorse he's got three small kids he's putting car seats in and out but you can definitely see some wear and tear the plastic scratches easily the one thing i would say forget this is a tesla just as a car this has um, Honda CRV grade materials. Yeah. Like the, the plastics and the fit and finish in here is kind of on par with like a CRV. And I would say that the soft tech seats in a Toyota are kind of yep. similar to this, although these are extremely comfortable and plush. This is a vegan material. There are no animal byproducts used for v this. This v makes v a difference. Vinyl seats for are vegan. People. Of course they're vegan. This was made by <laughs> Tesla. They <laughs> came up with vegan that. seats. That's I the, don't that's find that's the that. greatest marketing thing ever. Vegan seats. They're vinyl. Uh, yes, Zach. There's no yes, animals Zach, Zach. coming out of a. It doesn't a, matter, Zach. They're vegan and there's no animal byproduct. This my leather jacket is not vegan. He doesn't fit in here. I, on the other hand, <laughs> I'm all vegan today. Uh, what did you have for dinner last night, Andrea? Any chicken? Nope, no chicken. <laughs> Tesla has had reliability issues. Consumer Reports only recommended the Model 3 and it still only earned an average reliability. Has Tesla improved on this? I find it alarming that they can't get these problems under control. There is not a whole lot that should be going wrong with an electric engine. 
Zach so the, picked up his phone. He's made some notes. Yeah, I, I, I found an article with uh, Jake Fisher, Senior Director of Auto, Auto Testing at Consumer Reports. Mm -hmm. This was an interview done by CNBC, the business uh, channel. And here's some quotes. For EV introductions, this is the EV market generally. Yeah. For EV introductions, there is a tendency to just add so much tech uh, that is not necessary. And I would agree with that. We, uh, with the, the Mach-E, yeah. with the silly door handles and things, I thought that was kind of silly. Uh, Fisher went on to say, commonly reported issues from Model Y owners include defective sensors that had to be replaced, yep. problems with heat pumps uh, and air conditioning, body panels that don't line up, and water leaks into the trunk because of missing seals. Yep. According to Fisher, he is the senior director auto testing at Consumer Reports. He's that's not from us, that's from Consumer he's Reports. He's basically saying that there's just too many bells and whistles, and if you were to come up with a vehicle that maybe wasn't so complicated, I don't think this is complicated in any way, this technology. I actually find it very easy to use. But the more you throw into these EVs, the more chances that you could have some problems. And he also pointed out mm -hmm. that you don't see problems with the powertrain. It's all the extras that you add in. But here's the thing about Tesla. They started all this. Think of this innovation. I think it's quite incredible. It put the auto industry on notice. This is a pure EV company. And what do we see happening? We see it in the Mustang Mach-E, for example, the large Thanks. screen. But that's with everybody now. Like th this is really a company that everybody is chasing. Yeah. Look at the latest uh, S-Class from Mercedes-Benz. One big screen, yeah. door handles that hide away, a minimalist interior. I mean, kudos to Tesla. They prove that you yeah. can get people to buy an electric car, spend a lot of money in an electric car, fall in love with an electric car yep. and give them features and benefits that they hadn't even thought of, but they like. So the rest of the industry is chasing these guys. For sure. And the other thing is, if you speak to a Tesla owner, these owners are satisfied with their product. They don't regret buying a Tesla and they will buy another one. Okay. So back to Consumer Reports. Of all the brands that they cover, Tesla was second last in terms of yes. their quality index, right? Yeah. Last place was Lincoln and second last was Tesla. So this company definitely has issues to consider. Yeah. Now on the satisfaction index, guess what the top two brands were? Tesla was number one yeah. and Lincoln was number two. Go figure. So people, that's what I always call the pain pleasure matrix. So there's some pain having to get the car looked at once in a while, yeah. but the pleasure side is so big that um, definitely people like it. By the way, the and camp we have it in camp mode because we wanted to have the heated seats on and oh my gosh, it just displayed a tent okay, I'm gonna take a and a that. fire going. I mean, it looks amazing. It's these little things that make such a difference. And now it's time for our hot topic. What's this one, Andrea? A good friend of mine in Toronto just took delivery of a very similar Model Y. He says that the real difference with owning a Tesla is not the mechanical or electrical bit. It's the company has addressed what people dislike the most about cars, in other words, like Apple. It's the ownership experience, not the physical goods. Things like buying direct, the charging network, dog mode, etc. Do you agree? It's funny, Andrew and I were joking about the exact same thing. Basically, Tesla is the Apple of electric cars yeah. and everybody else is Android. And a big <laughs> part of that puzzle is the charging infrastructure, is that we have this hodgepodge over on the Android side of Sony and uh, all the different yeah. kind of Android phones. It's just Tesla, it's just Apple. That's basically what they have. If you talk to your kids, I know that our boys, they're Apple users and they only talk about how great Apple is and they talk about how great Tesla is. Now I've always talked about buying an electric car is a spreadsheet calculation. It's a lot yeah. more about the brain than it is about the heart. And when you go through all the pluses and minuses, so you get the range, you get the speed, you get the charging infrastructure, you get the technology, you get the great app that you can use, you get all of those things, yeah. it heavily skews towards the Tesla side. What you don't get is on the, on the negative side is there's not a value equation with this product. Yeah. And in my opinion, for the price, this car is $86,000. This has a $35,000 interior. For me, I personally wouldn't be able to live with this interior for that price, could you? Yes, I could live with this interior for that price because for me, I'm with you. It's not about the interior. I'm buying this EV for more than that. It's not about the looks either. I want the technology. 
I want that infrastructure because if I have any sort of range anxiety getting into an EV, I know that Tesla is going to take care of me with their superchargers. And also the EV range is really good in this. Well, it's interesting, even in the last year, there's more electric SUVs out there. Let's yeah. get into what else you can buy. For your consideration, four vehicles for you to consider. Up first is the Volkswagen ID4 all-wheel drive with 386 kilometers, 249 miles of EV range. It has 302 horsepower and a starting price of just under $50,000. Next is the Ford Mustang Mach-E all-wheel drive extended range with 346 horsepower and 435 kilometers or 270 miles of EV range. It has a starting price of $66,500. The Hyundai Ioniq 5 all-wheel drive long range with 320 horsepower and 414 kilometers, 256 miles of EV range. It has a starting price of just under $55,000. Here's our used car alternative from CanadaDrives.ca. We chose a 2018 Tesla Model 3 Long Range with 34,500 kilometers for $54,990. Click on the tab or the link in the description below to find more vehicles in this category from CanadaDrives.ca. So there are four electric vehicles for you to consider. All right, the warranty, the charging, all of that in our vital stats. Let's start with pricing. The long range is priced at just under $77,000 and the performance is just over $85,000. There are no JD Power ratings for the Model Y, but Car Edge states the Model Y will retain 51% of its value after five years. The Model Y can recharge up to 261 kilometers in 15 minutes at supercharger locations. Tesla clearly has the charging infrastructure in place with 3,000 plus supercharger stations and 30,000 plus superchargers around the world with six new locations opening up every week. Tesla says there is a software update coming where you can get free Wi-Fi while charging. This Model Y can tow 3,500 pounds. The warranty is four years, 80,000 kilometers or 50,000 miles. The battery and drive units are warranty to eight years or 192,000 kilometers, 120,000 miles. Lightning round, two things we like, two things we like to see improve. I can't get over the technology in here. I am so impressed. And if you're an acceleration junkie, this is the car for you. What I'd love to have is an option to adjust the regenerative braking system. And this suspension is really quite harsh. So I'm disappointed they don't have an adaptive suspension, especially at this price point. Three things I look for in an EV, technology, charging infrastructure, and EV range. Tesla, you nailed it. Unfortunately, this car is not for the masses at its starting price, but a big thanks to my buddy Rick and his family for letting us borrow this for a couple of days. We do appreciate it. This video is brought to you by Canada Drives. Shop online for your next used vehicle and enjoy the convenience of to-your-door delivery and the confidence of a seven-day love-it-or-return-it guarantee. Visit canadadrives.ca to learn more.